you. That's the gentleman I welcome over in Pinellas County and over on holiday and welcome Dennis to our church. And Lisa Patrick, is, it, is this the lady back here? Uh, all right, is this Lisa back here? God bless you. We're very happy you're here and everybody's here and we're going to worship the Lord and let's go ahead and assemble our um, um, brethren, uh, wait on Sister Kenzer here, but um, let's get our brethren assembled for the offering right after this and um, Sister Kenzer come forward and don't, don't mind us taking this time. You know, in church sometimes, it is an all scripture quotation, it is an all preaching, it is an all music, it is showing each other the love of God. That's the greatest thing a church works on, operates on, and if you don't have that, you can have all the rest. And all you've got is a frozen church that means nothing to God. Just a, a bunch of statistics. But if you can love one another and care for each other and keep emulation, jealousy out of your heart and care for one another and love each other, have no respect for persons, That's it. you have a great church. Yeah. And I'll say amen if you don't. Yeah. Praise the name yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Sister Kendra. Well, it's that time of the year again. Uh, want to wish Sister Marlo a happy Mother's Day. And would you please? Every year, we, I stand at the front door saying we want to wish her a special Mother's Day. And I've got a card here for you and a gift from the church. And one of God's greatest blessings is a gift of a special mother. Mothers have that have gone that extra mile, and you have. You have gone that extra mile. They touch our day, our days with kindness. They fill our hearts with gratitude and bring his love to life. And you have a blessing and a light to every life that you have touched. You have touched all of our lives. Thank you and happy Mother's Day. Illinois, you know, a few, last week, and um, of course that's my hometown. And one of the um, visitors said to me one day, um, "Did I know Don Choate?" And I said, uh, and we said at the, at the same time he said that I said, "Did you know my brother Clyde?" And he said, "Don is your cousin?" And I said, "No, he's actually my nephew." And he said, "Your nephew?" And I said, "You see." We don't often say this, but my mother had been married and she had two children. And my father had been married and he had five living children. And both of their spouses had passed and they didn't even know each other. And later they met and they married. So it's mine, yours, and ours. But we never, ever grew up that way. We were not stepbrothers, step half brothers. We were a family. And I'm so thankful that my mother and my father put that in us. And that's the way we are here. I said, you know, I have nieces and nephews that are much older than myself because of my father's children. Were, my father was older than my mother, and his children were, were older. And, of course, I learned I, when I became an adult that I was a mistake in life. I was never even supposed to be. But uh, the Lord, I think, had a hand in that. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, I'm here. But um, the Lord is so good. He is so good. Oh, amen. Okay. And um, I can't imagine life without him. As most of you know, uh, our mother lived to be 105. She died on her 105th birthday. After, I said to my mom, uh, to, um, few years before she died, I said, well, how did you and Daddy meet? And she said, well, I was working and I had a taxi to take me home and your dad was the driver. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> of course, it was a horse in Surrey, you know. <laughs> well, isn't that romantic? <laughs> but after my mom met the Lord, she never 
she was such a giving person. Always, uh, when she was 100 years old, my uh, siblings said, okay, we're all writing something about what mother meant to us, what she means to us. And I said, all right. So we all wrote, and I, it was amazing how that she was this different uh, person, or not really a different person, but, but filled different needs in each of us, you know. And I said, as I was growing up, um, my mother never had a car, and my father died when I was 11. But <laughs> what I remember doing with my mother was, is, and my hometown is a small town, if someone was ill, we walked to their house, we cleaned their house if it needed it, we cooked for them. Back then when you were sick, you stayed home more than today. And sometimes you needed someone to sit up with you all night. That was us. We would sit up all night with God's people. And when they passed, they brought you home and you sat up all night with them again. And you know, I'm so thankful that I have memories like that of my mother and my family. And then when she was on her, uh, I always went up for her birthday, of course. And I got there a couple days before her birthday. And uh, the day before her birthday, she had, uh, she wasn't feeling well. So the doctor put her in the hospital. And that afternoon she was laying in the bed and she says, oh. I said, Mama, yes. Do you hurt? Well, no, I don't hurt, but I'm tired. You have a right to be tired. So the next morning, around four o'clock in the morning, my sister and I were staying with her. And she said, she aroused, and she said, oh, Jesus, where are you? She said, Jesus, I need you. And she raised her head and said, Jesus, Jesus, and she was gone. And that was her reward. I know where she is. And that, I mean, I don't know what more you could ask for for a mother. But as I said here today, I'd like to tell you all, I do love you all. I love you all very much. And it was so nice to go to Illinois and see my natural family. I hadn't been in uh, almost eight years. I didn't realize it had been that long. But we had a wonderful time. But it's good to be home with the church family because you're special people too. Thank you.